This video will help you complete the stomata lab in which we investigated the leaf stomata of various plants under various conditions. If you are absent, this video should help you be able to complete the green stomata lab packet complete with sketches and answering the questions which we did under a microscope in class. The first section you'll watch is a short video about what leaf stomata are and how they work. This begonia plant, like most land plants, has more stomata on the underside of its leaves than on the top. The stomata control transpiration as well as the exchange of gases within the plant. The stomate is like a pore. Two cells called guard cells surround the stomate and can open and close in response to the amount of water in the plant, the light intensity, and the level of carbon dioxide in the air. Behind the stomata are air spaces that are saturated with water. A continuous chain of water molecules runs from the cells of the root hairs to these air spaces in the leaf, which form a link with the stomatal pores. Evaporation of water from leaf surfaces through the stomata provides the momentum for water to keep moving from root to leaf. In this lab, we will be using a light microscope. Please take a moment to review this microscope and remember the functions of each portion of the scope. The first thing that you need to do is to make a hypothesis about how the stomata will be on a plant that is in a well-lit place. So your hypothesis should state, if a plant is kept in a well-lit place, then the stomata will be Fill in the blank with what you think. Will they be open, closed, partially open? What do you think? Once your hypothesis is written down, you'll be starting part one. Part one, you're going to obtain a leaf impression of a petunia that was kept in the light, the bright light from a greenhouse. And the leaf impression was made by putting clear nail polish on the underside of a leaf, letting it dry, applying tape to that clear nail polish, and then ripping the tape off. That tape was then stuck to a slide, and that's what we looked at under the microscopes. What you'll be doing is you'll be taking the pictures that I have on the movie for you, and you'll be drawing them into the three circles that you see here on, the, on your sheet and also on this screen. All right, this is what you'll see on scanning power, which should be 10 times 4, which is 40x for the magnification. And on scanning power, you can't see a whole lot of detail. You see a lot of junk in the background, and you see some dark figures um, appearing in the microscope. Please make sure that you make a nice, detailed, accurate sketch of this in the first box under part 1. This is the second sketch that you'll need. This is low power of the stomata under a microscope. The low power is 10 times 10, so 100x. Note the red arrow, it points to a stomata. Can you tell if that stomata is open or closed? Make sure you're making a nice detailed sketch of these stomata. This is the third sketch that you'll need for part one. This is a stomata on high power, which is 10 times 40 or 400x for magnification. Make a nice detailed sketch of the stomata. You can see in the middle that the stomata is wide open, so this plant is undergoing photosynthesis. All right, now we are ready for part two, and the first thing that you need to do is make a hypothesis. Your hypothesis needs to be about if a plant is kept in the dark, then what will the stomata be like? Will they be open, closed, half open? Or do you think something completely different? All right, so in part two, you can see here that after your hypothesis, you're going to obtain a leaf impression of a petunia that is labeled dark from me. And the dark plant was kept in a box overnight. And you're going to look at it on low power, high power, and on scanning power and make three detailed sketches for me. Again, here we have the stomata on scanning power, which is 40x. And again, you can't see a lot of detail, but you can see some dark images in the background, and that's what we'll be zooming in on in the next powers. 
And here we have the stomata on low power closed. And if you look closely, look at the edges of the bigger circles and you'll see smaller circles. Try to see what the middle of them looks like. Make a nice detailed sketch for me on low power. This would be 100x. And these are the stomata on high power, which would be 400x. And here you can see them quite closed. They're flatter. Um, there's only a line in the middle. They're not wide open like the other stomata we saw. Please make a detailed sketch of these closed stomata on high power, which is 400x. Your sketches should be done now, and I just wanted to show you one more image of a closed and an open stomata. Closed is on the left, and open is on the right. Can you see the difference between the closed stomata and the open stomata? Closed is on the left, open is on the right. All right, if you were absent, um, you can go ahead and skip part three. I'll just exclude that from your grade. And then I'd like you to move on to the next page, which are, are the conclusion questions. You need to answer these in complete sentences. Number one says, which leaf, the one in the light or the dark, had the most open stomata? Uh, the what, what we found was that the stomata in the light were more open than the ones in the dark. Number two says, why did you think this leaf had the most stomata and that were open? Uh, what we talked about in the class is that these stomata were most open because the plant was undergoing photosynthesis. Number three says, how did the third leaf impression you looked at compare to the first two? If you were absent, you did not have to look at the third leaf impression, so you could just uh, pass over question number three. Question four says, at what time of day do you think stomata would be more closed, and why do you think that? What we talked about was that at nighttime they might be more closed, not necessarily all the way closed, not necessarily all of them closed, but more of them closed because of a lack of sunlight at nighttime. Question 5 says, why does the lower epidermis have more stomata than the upper epidermis of a leaf? What we spoke about in class is that the upper epidermis is more exposed to sunlight and direct sunlight. And if the stomata were on the upper epidermis, it would be more subjected to evaporation through the stomata. So the stomata are more likely to be on the lower epidermis of a leaf to protect it from over-evaporation. Question number six, what two gases move in and out of a leaf stomata? We talked about in class that O2, which is oxygen, and carbon dioxide, CO2, move in and out of a leaf. Number seven, what, are, what does a large number of leaf stomata indicate about the growing climate of a plant? We spoke about in class that a higher number of leaf stomata indicates that the plant is growing rapidly and in a wet climate. And the last question, question number eight, I would like you to answer on your own. It says, how do you think the number, size, shape, etc., of the stomata in a cactus would compare to the stomata you saw in today's lab? And I'd like you to answer that based on the answers that you have to the other questions. This should complete your stomata lab. Please make sure that your name is on the paper and turn it in. Thank you.